That's me to like it. I can The next one happens to be All right, thank you. Well, thank you everyone for coming to the uh, Salesforce Data Analytics Meetup. Appreciate it. We do this uh, every other month. Uh, so the next one, I think, is June 4th. So thank you for coming. Uh, my name is David Hecht. I'm the organizer. And uh, I also sell a bunch of apps for Salesforce, uh, credit card processing, and uh, marketing, Google Analytics, and lead tracking integration for Salesforce. So bug me if you need any of those things. Uh, I'd like to thank DX Continuum and Good Data for sponsoring this event, uh, and Geekdom uh, for hosting, as always. Um, if anyone's uh, a developer and is looking for a place to work, uh, I work here full time. It's a great place to work. Uh, memberships are pretty cheap, so you can talk to me about that as well. Uh, all right. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Satish Kumar, who's the director of uh, product management for DX Continuum. He's going to show us their new uh, predictive analytics product. So I'm very excited. Good evening, folks. How are you all doing today? Great. Are we all sober enough for a demo on predictive analytics? <laughs> Can't wait. If we're not drunk enough. <laughs> you know what? We are more accurate if you're drunk. <laughs> you know, David said, uh, you know, jump right into the demo, minimize the PowerPoint. Um, but uh, you know what? I'm just going to show a couple of slides here before we jump into the uh, demo. But even before I get started out here, I just wanted to ask, a couple of questions so I understand your usage of Salesforce. Uh, so how many of you here are uh, using Salesforce you know, as a user or you know, developing reports on Salesforce? Okay. And for those people, you know, how long have you been using Salesforce? Uh, you know, have you been using Salesforce, let's say, two years plus? Good to know, yeah. And, you know, how many of you folks are actually uh, on the technical side trying to develop analytical apps and reports? Good, thanks. So let me just quickly go over a few slides, uh, kind of set the stage here for the demo and then jump right into the application out here. Uh, Let's start with uh, who is DX Continuum and what do we do? DX Continuum is an early stage startup. We have been in business for two plus years now. Um, We're based out of the East Bay. What we do is uh, we make sales and marketing teams uh, a lot more effective by bringing in the science of uh, predictive analytics. Specifically, we predict winnable leads and opportunities, and we do that with 85% uh, plus accuracy. What this allows you is, allows you to prioritize your selling effort on the right leads and opportunities. Uh, so if your sales team, be it your inside sales team that is working on leads, or for that matter, your uh, field sales team that's working on opportunities, can then uh, work on the right leads and opportunities respectively. Uh, and that results in uh, increase in revenue. Uh, your sales velocity improves, um, your closing rates improve, and that impacts your uh, revenue. So uh, we've seen increase in revenues of 25%, and you can do all of this uh, with your uh, current resources. Our app is called uh, DXC Sales Suite. Uh, we are, uh, fully integrated uh, with Salesforce, uh, available from App Exchange. So if you go to App Exchange uh, and if you're lazy enough and you don't want to type the whole DXC sales suite, you can just type DXC. DX stands for decision. And uh, if you type DXC, you should be able to find us. Uh, we have uh, several market clients that are evaluating us. Uh, we have some Fortune 1000 clients on board as well. So before I jump into this demo, one last slide here uh, that kind of tells you, you know, how our analytics is built. Uh, 
So in terms of the data itself uh, that we use for uh, building our analytics, uh, the core data is, of course, the data that exists in your Salesforce. Uh, you know, people out here said that they've been using Salesforce for uh, two plus years. Uh, so you have data that is there uh, in leads, accounts, opportunities, opportunity history. So all of that basically serves as input for the, uh, our predictive analytics. Uh, you could use the structured data that is out here. You could also use the structured data that is external to Salesforce. You know, if you have uh, you know, data warehouses built and if you want that data to be used as a basis for the uh, analytics, you could do that. You could also take in uh, unstructured data. You know, you could take uh, social data from uh, LinkedIn or uh, you know, financial data from Bloomberg. And with that, uh, we can actually uh, give you an insight into the quality of the funnel. It's important when I say quality here because typical reports that you see uh, are all uh, talking about quantity metrics. You are going to be looking at you know, the number of leads, or number of opportunities, a dollar amount, but nothing that really tells you how good is your pipeline, how good is your funnel. And that is exactly what we are able to do. And we are doing that, you know, it kind of manifests for leads as, you know, here are the leads that your inside sales team should be uh, pursuing, and uh, here are the leads uh, that they can develop over time. So the ones that you can pursue are the ones that you want to be calling right away. And when it comes to opportunities, uh, we actually predict uh, which are the opportunities that are going to be winnable, which means your field sales people can again focus on the uh, right opportunities and eliminate spending time on the ones uh, that are not going to be resulting in this. So now let's look at you know, how all of this uh, manifests in our application. Any questions so far? Typically, you know, as long as we have, you know, two x to three x the sales cycle in terms of uh, time period, that is adequate data for us to train the model. Okay. Um, and uh, you know, typically we start with all the data that is there, uh, you know, the core data that is there from your Salesforce in itself. What we have seen has been uh, pretty good in terms of uh, giving us the high accuracy rates. Uh, of course, you know, in, in certain situations, clients do want us to use external data. In those cases, we have uh, used external data as well. Yeah. So let's just jump into the application right here. So what you see here is uh, what a typical uh, inside salesperson would see uh, when he comes in and then interacts with the leads tab. Uh, you know, we show it here as the DXC lead tab, but you know, this could be the actual lead tab itself that manifests in salesforce.com for the inside sales tab. Uh, uh, what this shows is basically uh, all the leads that have been uh, categorized into different priority buckets. Uh, so what we do is we actually use the analytics to score each lead, and the higher the score, the better the odds of that lead actually converting into an opportunity. So as you look at this chart, keep in mind that the dark blue ones are the ones uh, that uh, the ones that you want to be. Uh, calling right away. You know, typically your marketing campaigns uh, are generating a lot of uh, uh, leads for you. You have got this deluge of leads. You really don't know, you know, which are the ones you should be calling right away. Um, but you also know as an inside sales rep that, okay, hey, I'm way better off if I make that call right away in terms of improving my odds of uh, 
qualifying that or converting that uh, lead. So which of the leads I should be uh, calling right away? So the idea here is the inside sales rep can easily identify that by focusing on these uh, dark blue bars. In fact, if he looks at these dark blue bars and then uh, starts at the right hand side out here, you know, here are the ones uh, that have got the highest score and you know, he can basically use that to guide his uh, daily workflow. The stats are interactive. I just clicked on this particular uh, bar in itself. So now you can basically get an idea as to you know, what are all the leads uh, that are there, uh, which are the uh, higher score and which have got the highest propensity in terms of uh, being uh, converted into an opportunity. So the one point that I want to reinforce out here is uh, the analytics here is very granular. So you, you are actually seeing a score and the priority being assigned to each of these leads. On top of that, you also know the reasons why the analytics is assigning the priority. And it's all you know, integrated into uh, Salesforce. Uh, so you could basically uh, you know, click on this. You are actually seeing the uh, lead object itself. Uh, and this is very dynamic in the sense that you know, as the salesperson is making any changes out here and then you know, rescoring the uh, lead, you know, the score actually changes. And each day when he comes in, he can actually look at you know, here are the leads uh, that are there of the highest priority that he should be calling right away. Can you, uh, can you run this analysis? Can you filter on a, uh, by a product group, for example? Which, uh, which particular accounts might be more interested in software versus hardware and prioritize your leads that way? Uh, can you filter on uh, product groups? Yeah, so you, know, you, yeah. you perform your analysis for a particular product. There's one, one account may be interested in one product or another. Yeah, sure. I think uh, you know, what we have in the demo environment out here is uh, you could basically look at it uh, by team. These filters are something that you can build it uh, at multiple levels for multiple variables as well. I think right now what we have built it is for the uh, various teams. Actually, your question gives me a perfect segue in terms of you know, what uh, an inside sales manager would like to do, or you know, somebody who is really interested in one particular uh, product would like to do. So you can basically apply this filter, and then you can see basically, you know what, how good is the quality of my uh, leads that are coming in? You know, the more the dark blues that he sees, you know, the better the quality of the leads are. And you know, if he wants to really know, okay, hey, you know, what is actually driving these uh, light blues or the ones that have got less quality, he can actually drill down there. You know, as I was showing out here, he can come to this and then we can see you know, what are the reasons based on which the leads are actually scoring low. Yeah, I just didn't see where the um, particular product, for example, Parker Brothers in there. As, as I said here, you know, the, the filter here basically applies to uh, a team, uh, okay. but we could make this thing uh, configurable and you know, have it for the product as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What this enables you to do, in this predictive insight enables you to do is also uh, gives you insight into uh, how good are your marketing campaigns. So if you're the marketing person running the campaigns, uh, you may want to know exactly you know, which campaigns are being effective. So I'm going to click here on the uh, lead lens out here. You can see here, uh, you know, the marketing person can clearly see, uh, you know, which of the campaigns are resulting in uh, higher quality leads uh, getting generated. Uh, you know, for one thing out here, uh, the the e-learning webinar here seems to be generating a bunch of leads, and uh, you know, you can also see that uh, Captiva is one of those uh, campaigns or lead sources which is actually uh, being pretty effective in terms of uh, generating. Uh, high quality leads. And, and the beauty of this is uh, you are going to be able to do this thing uh, uh, 
as it happens, you're not really going to be uh, waiting for the cycle to be done and then you know, it's getting converted into an opportunity. So this is something that you're getting immediate insight into and then you can optimize it. What this allows you to do uh, at a different level is also in terms of, okay, hey, I got these various campaign assets. Uh, what should be the next campaign asset I should be sending to this particular prospect so that uh, the odds of that prospect getting converted into an opportunity uh, is higher. So the analytics can be used uh, from that aspect as well. Uh, so when I was looking at BXC lead out there, I was showing you uh, uh, how a uh, sales rep could use it to prioritize and then you know, guide his daily action in terms of uh, what calls to be making right away. But you know, the an same analytics can also be used in terms of uh, assigning the uh, right rep itself uh, to the lead, so that in itself uh, could improve the odds of that particular lead getting converted into an opportunity. So now let's just step into the uh, field sales rollout here. Uh, so the challenge that you have here in terms of uh, having a deluge of uh, leads and then trying to figure out, okay, hey, which one should I be focusing on applies to field sales as well. You know, they, you know, it's more about what are the opportunities should I be pursuing? So what you see out here is uh, you have got your uh, funnel quality here again, uh, which is uh, showing you, uh, you know, how good the funnel is. You know, is this funnel good for me in terms of uh, high quality opportunities or is this just something that's being stuffed and padded for making the numbers out here. Again, uh, the thumb rule here is you want to see more of the dark blues, which means uh, you know, the better the quality of the opportunity is there and more of these opportunities are predicted to be won. What you will see here with respect to opportunities is uh, there are two bars out here. You, know, you have one bar for the uh, number, which is the thin slice, and you have the uh, thicker bar here that kind of shows the same thing uh, aggregated by quality for the dollar amount that is there in the opportunity. So the one thing you will notice here is uh, as you move through the sales process from plan to discover to uh, qual qualify, propose, and commit, you would expect you know, more of the bar to be being uh, dark blue because you know, as you move further in the sales process, uh, you would expect you know, higher confidence and uh, more of them being converted into uh, a win, but then you, you know, obviously you know, this is not the ideal funnel that a sales VP would want to see out here. Um, uh, and you, when you look at this, you know, the other thing that really jumps out is that uh, there's something shitty happening here in terms of my uh, early stage opportunities here. There are very few here that are uh, got good quality. And you know, if if I were the uh, the manager here, I could basically uh, you know zero in on here and then look at you know what's actually driving this. Again, you know, just like we had it for leads, uh, the. Uh, Insights that we offer here are very granular. So the. Uh, I have a question. So you, you're showing the, the predictive analytics in terms of reports, and here's all the data, and it all sort of swept through this all. Do you have any kind of analytics that tells you, okay, you know, opportunities with a pilot seem to be winning more often than opportunities without a pilot? Do you have any kind of that analytics? Sort of be successful. Uh, so just you're keeping track of that, and you know, so going on. Then you're going to follow the terms of the pilot without pilot. Then it will show up as a factor. Yeah, but if, if I'm, let's say, a sales rep and I'm going through certain steps, right, and whatever presentations I do, and you know, it would be nice if, you know, if it was taking predictive analytics, does it come and tell me as a sales rep to say something like, uh, in, at this stage, the uh, opportunities mm -hmm. been successful at this stage are the ones that have a pilot specifically at this point in time? Right. So is this possible? Right? Uh, again, if, if the data is being tracked, it is possible. So what, what we're showing here. Is based on what our early customers, kind of insights that early customers want to see okay, so so from, from the data. But what, what you, that use case is very low. Okay. You know, uh, thing, uh, uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 
So what I did out here is, you know, I kind of donned the hat of the sales manager here, and then I'm trying to kind of dig in here and then find out, okay, hey, you know, why is my early stage opportunity, specifically in the discover stage, uh, a whole lot of it is uh, not good quality. And then, you know, immediately you can kind of see that, okay, hey, you know what, the age, amount, and lead source are some of the uh, reasons uh, based on which, you know, they are all scoring low. Obviously, you know, you can't do much about the lead source out here, but then you do have some control over age and amount. And, you know, if you really want to have a discussion with your team, you know, you, you're kind of having a, a, a sense as to, you know, what, what are the various factors that are actually driving low quality. Again, uh, you know, th this one is also, you know, very tightly integrated with your opportunity and, you know, some of our clients are saying, you know, you could basically replace the opportunity tab uh, itself with the DHC opportunity. Uh, so the salesperson, when he comes in out here, he basically gets the uh, prioritized opportunities to be working on. These insights, again, uh, kind of tell you, you know, how good the quality of the funnel is, but then one big question that remains is, uh, am I going to be making my quota? And uh, let, let's look at, okay, hey, what our analytics allows you to uh, provide so I'll answer that particular question. Uh, so I'm clicking here on the uh, sales lens here. So what this is showing you is the uh, pipeline health. So what it effectively is doing is, is comparing your current pipeline with your quota. So you, if you see these two bars out here, this bar is for the quota and this bar is for the uh, current pipeline. Uh, so if you see a red out here, that means there is a gap there in terms of, uh, you know, your remaining quota to be achieved and you don't have enough opportunities that are there in your uh, pipeline. Enough good quality opportunities in your current pipeline that will help you achieve the remaining quota. So in this particular case, you know, you can clearly see that the Eastern sales team has got a gap in terms of uh, achieving the quota. And if you want to really drill down further and then see, okay, hey, who in Eastern sales team has got the uh, most gap? You could use these filters out here. And then you can see that you know, in this particular case, uh, Modesta is the one that has got the uh, gap. In fact, you know, Tisa is doing pretty well. Modesta is the one that has got this uh, gap. So the next question that comes in is, okay, hey, I got this gap. I know that I'm not going to be you know, the analytics tells me the odds of me making the quota is low out here. I, I have this gap that I need to address. So what can you tell me as, you know, potential strategies for me to uh, minimize this gap or address this gap? So I'm going to jump here into the uh, opportunity prioritization report, which helps you answer that particular question. How do I address that gap? So what this gives you is basically prioritizes the opportunities into three buckets. Uh, those are shown in uh, three slices out here. Uh, you have the green slice out here, which is the yours to lose category, uh, which is basically you know slam dunk opportunities. Um, they are scoring really high. You know they are all uh, got high odds of being won. So you know there's no business why you should be losing them. You're calling it the yours to lose. Uh, category. Uh, then you have the uh, watch closely category. Watch closely is uh, basically uh, a mix of opportunities that are predicted to be won or predicted to be lost, but they're so close to the cutoff here in terms of uh, the cutoff score that determines whether it's going to be predicted to be won or predicted to be lost. And these are the opportunities that you should be uh, actually be uh, watching closely, spending more time on because, you know, that actually gives you uh, better chances for you in terms of uh, achieving your quota. And justify is the category uh, 
where you know the opportunities are really scoring low. So you, you got to be really thinking in terms of okay, hey, am I better off even spending any time at all? You know, you really have to rationalize any kind of resources that you're going to be uh, putting into those uh, opportunities in the justify category. So one way for you to uh, tackle this uh, gap would be to look at okay, hey, here are the opportunities that are so close to the cutoff. These are predicted to be lost. Is there something that I can do here to uh, work on those particular opportunities and then uh, minimize my gap? So if I click here, you can see here uh, that uh, there are these two opportunities here in Humana and uh, Costco Wholesale, uh, which are you know, potentially two opportunities that can be leveraged uh, to uh, address the gap that you saw there. I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, is there a way for the user to tweak the scoring system? It's being given by your system, right? Mm -hmm. Can I weigh in, in any way the way it calculates the scores? Uh, mm -hmm. No. Uh, what you can do is you can add factors. Right? So the way the score is calculated is the way the score is calculated. You can decide, you know what, I think um, <clears throat> the, uh, the revenue of my customers is likely to be predicted. Right, so then you can add that as a as a column into the model. The How can you tune this system? Are you tune the system by that? adding data elements that you think will be predictive of the outcome. Yeah. Does it give any can you show us uh, preferences yeah. or settings that would yeah. give us some insight into the business rules? <coughs> so, uh, okay. so go to the console. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. So, so the, what you didn't want to do here is to have people tweak uh, the numbers themselves. This is supposed to be data driven, right? And, and the weights are actually inferred from recent history. And so does it provide sense. any guideline in terms of where I'm, I don't have enough data? Because if it doesn't have enough data, it's not going to be accurate. Does it give any hints? So we won't, take, you know, we won't take up columns where there's not enough data. So the columns that actually get used to create the model the columns that show up as reasons and so on and so forth are all columns where there's enough data for you to <coughs> use them in a collection. So, so one of the main purposes here is to <coughs> solve a lot of what is now currently extremely manual, right? In order to make greater and that is accessible to business analysts and so on and so forth. So all the standard issues of this sort, which columns to use and so on and so forth. We have taken care of that in the how to prepare the data, so on and so forth. All those taken care of in the solution. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we, we have the uh, you know the the, car, the console configuration. This is not this is something that you do one time. You know when you start building the models, you actually uh, define you know what are my uh, active opportunities, you actually specify it in like a filter out here. Um, you know, we could make this UI a little better, you know, we haven't really spent, but that's something that's there in the uh, roadmap. But, so you do have the option in terms of, okay, hey, uh, what columns are going to be uh, there as uh, inputs for you to uh, build the model itself. I had a follow-up to that. So I'm a Salesforce admin, so if my business needs change, do I have to go through somebody at your end to, to make the changes, the configuration changes? Is it a completely managed package, or are there any settings that I could change as a Salesforce admin for my company, where there's certain settings that I could tweak based on, say, if the uh, VP of sales comes and says, we want to change what the cutoff uh, rate would be, or, or are those changes something that I could make, or I'd have to contact no, the, the, you could potentially change the uh, cutoff score. Okay. That's something that we can do. And then, you know, the, the models themselves, uh, you know, you can keep generating the model itself, and then, you know, we pick the best candidate model in terms of the accuracy, and then we apply that for you. So it's, you know, it's not like, you know, you have to be thinking in terms of, like, Kanan was doing, you know, all of that heavy lifting that happens in terms of building the model, in terms of getting the data in, you know, uh, figuring out, you know, this is the best model for you, given your data in terms of, uh, you know, providing the best accuracy for the predictions, you know, we have that all
figured out uh, for you. But you know, in terms of configuration parameters, yeah. if you want to go in and then change the cutoff score, yes, that's a lever that you can. Can you change other model types? Like whatever your suggestion is, do you have other options that we can choose based on? So let me answer that question. We actually do not allow people to choose which statistical algorithm goes in. Uh -huh. That's a part of the product, by the way. The entire design is built to help, you know, not to get any disorder for uh, finding query engines. So you have an 80-20 problem, right? You're going to solve 80% of the problem by being able to do that. And we will give you an accuracy. I mean, every model which we build at the actually, there is an accuracy number. In this case, an accuracy number is then the cost. So which is much lower because there's no more than a test data. But for all customers we build, we usually tend to have accuracy about 80 80 percent plus. So if your model, if you have data, which is what we have seen with most of our customers so far, you have both at least seven or eight customers of really big size. And our market segment is primarily 100 million plus revenue and 100 salespeople plus. So we're not going to address a smaller sized companies as a part of this product. Mm -hmm. And for those customers, we're already seeing that there is enough data that you can actually get most of these models built with about 80% plus accuracy. And if I allow people to change and tweak the stuff, then I will not be able to live up to my commitment as well as I can. So we will be tracking as we predict what the outcome of the result is based to, to what the model has actually said it's going to do. And you can add additional columns and to help improve the model, or if you think that there is something like, for example, salesperson, right? A salesperson's name is here in the Salesforce database. But a salesperson may have experience, right? There can be three years of experience selling this, four years of experience doing that. You can pull all the information from an HCM database, add those with attributes. If some of that is predictive of his ability to sell, it will be picked up by the model. And our model actually keeps refreshed with the changes happening. For example, for opportunity, we can automatically refresh every quarter, and every new wins and losses will actually add to the to the uh, model building. And the things that come out of WAP will, you know, will redeploy a new model automatically per system. Mm -hmm. So all that is done in the cloud. That's what we plug into a typical Salesforce ecosystem. Yeah. You also mentioned quality versus quantity, so you could have. Uh one sells up the loads of opportunities where you know, only a few are winning, versus another sells up that only has 10, but all are won. Yeah, you know, CS rep is a factor, number of what products you sell in a factor, which object you sell in a factor, which is, uh, you know, what price range is in a factor, all that are automatically picked up in the model. Think about the model being, a, for example, a, uh, like a huge decision tree where there are so many different branches, and somewhere down the road, one of your current opportunities will not. And for the reason, we just, I mean, from what we saw, for the reason you say like the uh, rep or lead mm -hmm. source or whatever it is was very short. Is there a way to see what's the reasoning behind it? What's the reasoning behind this lead source being? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So we show the factors, right? We show the three factors, yeah. and then those three factors will change as the rest of it are making more changes in the system. So all the activities the rep is doing in the prior what, uh, stages, actually helps us predict whether the opportunity is still progressing towards a win or not. It's a continuous system. It's not something which you score in the beginning of a lead gen and drop it. It's like throughout the process. So, so, just so I also finish the answer to your question. So I'm going to say the reason lead source is the uh, reason why a property score is high, because what we have seen happen is that, if, let's say with the customer referral, the win rate is yeah. much higher, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas if it's a web lead, then the win rate is much lower. So the lead source is customer referral, then you know that's the reason why you know the lead source is the reason why this option is going on. As opposed to uh, <laughs> if, the, if the lead source is web, that could be the reason why lead source is the reason mm -hmm. why the option is going on. Yeah, we can connect offline. Yeah. offline. I can show you one of the existing reports as well as you know a, a detailed report that we have in the pipeline there uh, that can actually give you more. Structured data from LinkedIn and Bloomberg. I guess two questions. One, how much impact does that seem to have on, on accuracy models? And okay. two, how do you improve the unstructured data? Uh, right. So, so we, we, what we can tell you is that it does improve uh, accuracy, but you know, most of the signal is there in the unstructured data what we've seen so far. Okay. So, so in fact, uh, one of the one of our customers, we used they had a structured text inside the option of the object itself. And so uh, there were some, for example, reasons why we changed the status. Because the actual 
the name of the column. And they you know, what we found was as soon as the rep puts in something there, chances are they're going to do some shit. <laughs> 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 so, it almost didn't matter what they put in there. <laughs> but but, uh, but the kind of thing there's also things that like customers are running my call. You know, there was a there was a you know org change in the customer. My sponsor is gone. You know, they're doing M and A. You know, that, that kind of stuff. And so what you've done is you identified about five or six you know, key intent pieces of intent. So it's not arbitrary you know text mining. We're, we're looking for very specific signals. Right? If, if it's customer engagement is one signal, we're looking for org change as a signal. Looking for financial performance as a signal. Looking for execution risk as a signal. So. For instance, you know, a customer might say, or a customer might say, you know, this customer wants us to have footprint in Timbuktu and we don't have any, right? And so that's a risk. And so should we be those kinds of things? Are, you know, so it's not so it's very specific things we're looking for. So we basically infer, think of these five or six additional columns, right, in, in the data set from the unstructured uh, data. Does that, does that help? Yeah. Any other question? I just want to you know, wrap this up by saying that you know, what the application is currently available there in uh, App Exchange. Um, if you have more information, you can always contact us. We're all wearing this DXC Continuum t-shirt. Uh, or you can always go to our website as well. I strongly encourage you folks to drop your business cards as well. You could win a $50 gift card from uh, Starbucks. Thank you, folks. Uh, We have our two.